Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And a uh, nice day today, nice and warm. Over there, you can see there's some smoke coming up. And uh, there's a fire over there. Apparently, it was a controlled burn by the fire department, and it got away from them. And... Uh, it was a lot worse than that earlier. It's uh looks like the white smoke looks like they've getting a, a handle on it. And it uh we won't have to wait to see until later today as to how many acres were lost because of it. But uh the guy that was doing the reporting on uh YouTube said uh, uh this is the first time he's ever covered a fire in California. Uh, that uh, was uh, burning around snow-covered mountains. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, I'm going to answer some questions that I've received recently and uh, get a couple of people on uh, in line on what they want to know. Okay, first question comes from uh, Lloyd or Lou, whichever one you want, from Florida. And he's uh, down in the Panama City uh, beach area. And uh, we're, we're laughing because the last time I was down that way was uh, spring break 1979. Um, I was there at a place called the Spinnaker, which is a nightclub right on the beach. And uh, there's a long story behind that, but uh, that was one of my worst trips ever because I ended up with uh, third degree burns from the sun because I had too much tequila for the first time in my life and uh, passed out on the beach in the sun. So anyway, without getting deep into that, the question I got from him was uh, about my batteries. Where did I get them and um, how did I get them and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so you can see there's one down here that's red that's different than the others, but it's actually the, still the same um, battery. It's just a later model that they uh, did them all in red instead of red top with white sides. Uh, these batteries are the US, that's Uniform Sierra 2200. Um, XC2, that's X-Ray Charlie 2. They're 6-volt batteries that are designed for golf carts. And why did I go with these? Well, first of all, um, golf cart batteries are specifically designed to charge quickly and discharge slowly. So that they, uh, you know, they can plug them in, charge them up quick, and then somebody can take that golf cart out on the uh, the golf course and ride from uh, one through 19 holes. Yeah, you got to go to the 19th hole. <laughs> anyway, they can get out there and, and cruise all day in the thing and still have plenty of battery power left. So that's why I went with these uh, originally, but also at the time I bought these, um, which is about nine years ago. These batteries were only $99 a piece. Yeah, wasn't that nice? So anyway, in between that time and now, uh, one of our illustrious um, leaders in Washington decided that uh, they're going to outlaw mining lead in the United States. So lead acid batteries of course skyrocketed in price they are now about three hundred dollars delivered each so that's three times what they were when I bought them but the uh, red one there I got as a uh, refurbished battery from locally from a place called California Batteries Incorporated and uh, they sell new and refurbished batteries they got a pretty good warranty on them and all of that so um, it was a lot cheaper I mean 
it cost me like $120 for that battery instead of $300. So uh, that's better than uh, putting in a brand new battery in an old battery bank. You don't ever want to do that. Um, if you can, get a refurbished battery uh, that'll, that'll match the age of your existing batteries. Because the weakest battery in the link will draw the others down to its level. So uh, if you put one weak battery in a whole group of, uh, of batteries, all your batteries will end up being the weak battery. So remember that. So anyway, um, I will leave a link in the description um, if you want to look the battery up on Amazon. And uh, if you do buy one through the link that I send you, I get credit for the sale. So um, you help me out a little bit too. But you don't have to buy it from them. You can see if you can find it cheaper somewhere else or whatever. But I did want to get that uh, out there for Lloyd and uh, I'll let him know that uh, I take care of my viewers. So when they ask questions and they need to know something, I get back to them about it. So next in line, because it's along the same uh, token, this one goes out to Sherry the Secretary, who has been a sweetheart helping me out with dog food and uh, as best as she can. Anyway, she's going to be, in about a year, moving off-grid herself. I'm not going to tell you where or anything like that. That's her business. And I don't think, uh, like myself, I don't like people all knowing exactly where I am. So you get a, a hint of where I am, but I don't like everybody knowing exactly where I am. So anyway, what I told her was uh, to help her size her solar and battery system that she's going to need to live in a fifth wheel. But she's also adding on a couple of um, tiny house uh, buildings and, and sheds and stuff. So I told her what she needed to get was this item right here. It's called a uh, kilowatt P3. And the reason I told her to get this is because we need to know what her uh, wattage usage or wattage needs are for the fifth wheel so that we can uh, uh, determine what size uh, system she's going to need to make sure she has power when she needs it. Is a... Um, She's also going to be, if I'm not mistaken, in an area that's going to be susceptible to cold winters. So uh, got to take into consideration that because campers, fifth wheelers, and all of that stuff are not very well insulated. So um, I can get into that in, in, in another video, but there's a, uh, a way of uh, keeping the heat in to your camper or fifth wheels and or things like that or your motorhome um, using thermal uh, roll stuff that you put in the windows for the winter so anyway now this thing you look at the gate the thing on the back here the max voltage 120 volts 50 or 60 hertz max current 15 amps now that's a concern because a fifth wheel would be uh, 50 amp or 30 amp or something like that and uh, you know you can't run everything through this meter at the same time now 15 amps that's basically the max current that you would run on a 20 amp breaker now most houses and uh, motorhomes and things like that that have AC alternating current 120 volt systems in built into them um, have a breaker box with both 15 and 20 amp breakers um, they might also have a 30 amp breaker in there and I'm going to explain to you what all that means okay the, the lighting um, circuits are usually 15 amps that's the max that you'll ever need for a lighting circuit. And even less than that nowadays that everybody uses LEDs. So the um, 15 amps, uh, you only want to use like uh, three quarters 
of the max rating of your breaker um, to be in the safe side so it doesn't keep popping the breaker on you. So a 20 amp breaker actually should max out at 15 amps. And most of the items, big items like your um, microwave and your refrigerator, things like that, will all use um, a 20 amp breaker, but they won't ever go over 15 amps. If they do, they, they're, they're usually uh, heating up the circuit too much. So you're safe on that. So the way you want to use this, Sherry, is you're going to plug it in with the adapters I, to uh, I told you you had to get. And you don't have to leave it in for 24 hours. That's, uh, that's only to um, check on a refrigerator running, how much it's going to use, things like that. Um, what you want, and that would be only for the refrigerator, so you would have this just plugged in just for the refrigerator. So you, since you're going to be plugging the, this unit in between your service panel and your fifth wheel, you're going to want to make sure that you don't go over the 15 amps that you're using, going to use on this. So the way to do that is turn off everything in your fifth wheel. Make sure everything is shut off. Now, don't worry about the refrigerator. You can leave that on for right now. So what you're going to do is plug this in with everything shut off. Then you're going to get your pad and paper. And you're going to go around and start with, like, turn the TV on. And then you go out and look at the meter and make sure you press the watts button right here in the center. So it's reading watts. So you want to go out and see um, how many watts the TV uses. And right on your pad, TV, X amount of watts. Um, then turn on your next item, uh, your toaster. Okay, shut the TV off. Put a slice of toast in your toaster. Press the, the button down and then go outside and look at see what your watts are on the toaster write that down on your pad so you're gonna do this for each electrical item that you have even the lights you're gonna make sure you shut off the item first and then go go to the next item turn your lights on go outside read how many watts your lights are using and so forth and so on now when it comes to the refrigerator what you're gonna do is open the refrigerator door and leave it open and with everything else, of course, shut off. Now you could go over to your meter here and you will see all of a sudden a surge will come up and it'll tell you how many watts surge the refrigerator compressor uses when it turns on. And that's what you're going to write down. So that's how you're going to use this meter. And that'll get all of your items one at a time in a list on your, um, your pad. And you're going to keep that. Because down the line, somebody may ask you, how many watts does this thing use? And you can say, let me get my piece of paper. And uh, you can tell them. So that's how you're going to do it. And then when you get all of the list put together, then you're going to say, okay, this is what I've got. Now, when it comes to lights, you can do all the lights. You could turn on, um, when everything else is shut off, Turn on every light in the in the uh, fifth wheel all at once. Just go from room to room, turn on all the lights. Because all the lights together are only on a 15 amp breaker, so they're not going over 15 amps. And you could take all of them in one reading. So you'll know all my lights use this many watts. Once we get all of that together, then we'll start sizing up your battery bank, your solar panels, and size wiring you're going to need and things like that all right that's all i have for today thanks for joining me this is g bear reminding you thumbs up down there and don't forget to share and subscribe and i'm signing off